When you fry things in hot oil, you're also changing the chemical structure of things. That entire browning, golden browning, crisping of food actually changes the chemical yeah. structure of the food itself. Here's the thing that's kind of like a little risky. You go to a restaurant to eat, you have no idea if they're reusing their oil over and over and over again. You know, are there any healthier oils to use and how to use them? Most oils that are reused, when we heat them to cook, whether we're actually, you know, uh, I mean, again, deep frying is generally something that's not very healthy. The process of deep frying actually changes the chemical, the natural chemicals that make up oil in the oil itself and then paint it onto the food, stick it onto the food. So we're eating some of the changed chemicals when we actually eat deep fried food. But when you fry things in hot oil, you're also changing the chemical structure of things. That entire browning, golden browning, crisping of food actually changes the chemical yeah. structure of the food itself in, in ways that are potentially carcinogenic. And so just need to be careful about that. The third, it, it, so, so I say, you know, like reusing oil, here's the thing that's kind of like a little risky. You go to a restaurant to eat, you have no idea if they're reusing their oil over and over and over again. You know, um, I mean, th think about in uh, Asian restaurants, whether it's an Indian restaurant or a Chinese restaurant, they've got these gigantic vats where they're frying tasty little bits up, um, but they may be reusing that oil for days. So um, uh, reused oil, not good for you, for sure. And, and the stuff that's fried in oil can also change in time. So let's start now talking about just like the, the properties of oils themselves. This is where I think rather than kind of walk into the quicksand of trying to say is palm oil better than corn oil, is coconut oil dangerous for you? You know, like we can wade into that jungle. The best way to think about it, to help give clarity is, you know, are there any healthier oils to use and how to use them? And this is where I think olive oil really stands out. Number yeah. one, it's part of a healthy pattern of eating that's been revered for thousands of years. And that's in the Mediterranean traditional Mediterranean diet. There is great pride that we as humans have always had, and it's still within us, to know something about the food that is around us. I mean, you know, uh, if you talk to a farmer, they are proud of what they have. If you talk to a villager, they're really proud of what their community, what grows around their community. And again, I think that, you know, something that maybe that we're fighting against, because I, I want to draw back the jargon that you raised at the beginning that I think is helpful to think about. What are we, what are we really fighting against? You know, I think we're, we're fighting against our distraction from ourselves, getting to know who we are, getting to know, slowing down so we can actually understand our own pace. We're getting distracted by the pace of what we're expected to do. And so we've got no time for ourselves, right? I mean, every Every young working parent certainly feels that way. Mm -hmm. You know, like, man, I'm so busy, I don't have time for myself. And yet, when it comes to food and health, we all need to have that time for ourselves. And I think we should take great pride in saying what it is that we actually love. And the olives are seasonal, they're pressed. The extra virgin olive oil contains not just fat, poly monounsaturated fatty acids, which are better for your body and less damaging for your cardiovascular health, but there's a lot of polyphenols that come from the olive itself. Now, a lot of people don't understand this, but when you look at olive oil, the reason we say extra virgin olive oil, E-V-O-O, -O, you know, that's what the that's what supermarkets and what restaurants are proud to use now, is because it's not just fat. It contains the polyphenols from the oil. So if, if you were to actually, by the way, this is a good experiment, to buy a little container of olives from your grocery store, deep hit it, make it easy for yourself, and literally, you know, take it home and, and take a, a heavy glass or take a, a, a board, like a, like a heavy cutting board, and press those olives yourself. And you'll actually see, if you press hard enough, you'll see some oil come out of it. Now, in, a, in an olive oil factory, I mean, that, that's, that's, so you can actually appreciate where your food comes from, where your olive oil comes from. And when you actually press it, you'll see that you've crushed the olives. And some of the bits from the olives are actually in the olive oil. The reason that olive oil tastes so good. It's got that, you know, kind of um, peppery, vegetal kind of quality to it. Um, it's got an umami flavor. It's not because the fat is flavorful. It's because the bits of olives that were crushed in there mm. are actually in there flavoring it. Now, those bits and the stuff that comes from the meat of the olives contain the polyphenols, one of which is hydroxytyrosol. Hydroxytyrosol sounds like a very complicated chemical name. But you should know that that comes from the olive. Now, 
uh, olive oil will have some of it, only about 20% of the of, of it. But if you actually press that olive, 80% goes into the olive water and, and it's stuck in the pulp. And so one of the things that I always say is that, you know, if you really love olive oil and you want to get the most out of it, um, just eat the whole olive, you know, and you can actually cut up an olive and you'll get a little bit of fat, you'll get all that flavor and you'll get a lot more of the polyphenol. Now, if you're going to cook with olive oil, I, I, I always say go for extra virgin because of that reason. I would say don't deep fry, but, but you can spray, you can put, put some on uh, to food. You can actually saute with it. Not too much. All the studies show that about three tablespoons of olive oil is sort of like what you probably that's around the max of what you'd want a day. So where nobody's drinking olive oil. And then the other thing that is if you want to choose which olive oil, because I get overwhelmed when I walk into a store and I see all these like a whole wall full of olive oils. Right. Everybody's marketing. Here's what I do again. I pick up the olives uh, and oil and I look at the ingredients. <clears throat> what do I look for? I look for monovarietal olive oil. Monovarietal means it's made with just one kind of olive. And I look for the one kind of olive that that, it, that oil is made from, from three different varieties of olive. In Spain, Spanish olive oil, I look for Picuel, P-I-C-U-A-L. Picuel olives, among the highest in, in polyphenols in the oil. So the olive oil will be loaded. Second, um, Greek olive oil. Um, the Koroneki olive, which is from the Peloponnesus. It, both, both the Picuel and Koroneki are very common olives, so that's a good news. It's not very expensive. Highest amount of poly, one of the top three polyphenols. And the third, for Italian olive oil, I look for oil that's been pressed from a monovarietal called Moraiolo, and that comes from Umbria. And there, that's less common, harder to find, a little pricier, but I just gave you three olives Picuel, Kordeki, Moriolo, uh, that are not, most of them are not good eating olives, but they're great for olive oil. They're packed with polyphenols. If you get uh, olive oil that is monovarietal, pressed only from each of those, you can be guaranteed that you're getting sort of the top, the sort of the capo de capo of the polyphenols in the olive oil. Interestingly, olive oil can also boost the nutrient absorption from certain foods, like the lycopene in tomatoes. So incorporating it into your diet can be a smart move for your health. Keep in mind, the choice of cooking oil can make a big difference. Extra virgin olive oil, known for its robust flavor and health benefits, is a standout option. So, the next time you're whipping up a meal, don't forget to grab that bottle of golden goodness. Your heart and your palate will be grateful. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to be optimal for more videos like this. Also. Let me know in the comments below what type of oil you use. See you next time. Bye.